Hey, Anthony, did you ever apply to be an RA? Yeah, but I never realized they actually look at your criminal record. Oh. Well, we'll be sitting down with a real-life Emerson RA. Coming up, Harrison Richland shows you where you can go to get some culture. Plus, we're joined by Paul Stark, senior producer of The Chew. Hello everyone, I'm Anthony Chase. And I'm Logan Levitt. Welcome to the second installment of Fast Forward Rewind. Tonight we're going to start things off with our events correspondent Mike Cantalupo, who is on the scene at the Max Goldberg Comedy Show. He also had a sit-down interview with Max Goldberg. Let's check it out. Dorms are decorated, parents are gone, and now it's time to have some fun, baby. We're in the and Paramount the Theater for some comedy night with Max Goldberg. Things are about events. Are you excited for the show? I'm really excited. Do you know anything about Max Goldberg? Nothing all. He's on Google. Max. Max. Mike. George. Steve. How you doing, Mike? Good to talk they to you, They say you're a comedian. I've, they ha I've heard that from them also, mm. yeah. Seeing in Massachusetts, they play my favorite drinking game, driving and it is hilarious I, i'd like to think that a lot of people like stand-up comedy i don't know oh, that yeah. they want to be stand-up comedian you're just like i'm going to disneyland today god i need to smile about something any advice for new upcoming freshmen don't sleep with people on your floor um that's super no important. floor sis don't do it what happens if, like, it's just somebody special, like this girl? Sleep with them a floor girl. below you on your friend's room, you know what I mean? Like, just don't do it there. Uh, if, if you go to the LB room 1127 and turn a black light on, nothing will happen because I was there. <laughs> Definitely. Students are coming out. Let's see what they thought about Max Goldberg. We're here with Emily. Emily, what did you think about the show? I thought it was really excellent. I thought it was great that they had an Emerson alumni come back. It was pretty fun. That's it. Yeah. All right. Well, it was good. That was hilarious. All right, guys. Max Goldberg was great tonight, but I am pooped. I will see you tomorrow when the latter half of the alphabet moves in. I'm sorry that you guys didn't get to see the show. I hope you're not too jealous, but you should be. Back to you. Well, your first week at Emerson might feel more like a vacation with all these events, <laughs> Logan. I know. They have some great events. They have the Max Goldberg Comedy Show, which I know is very hilarious. Exactly. And Emerson they also alum. have... Yes, and they also have the great OL dance. Oh, man, I can remember with the video of the OLs and the OLs dancing in the aisle, I hadn't seen a show like that <laughs> since Lion King on Broadway. <laughs> I know, right? It's, it's almost equal. But as an OL last year, I know there's a lot of training to do the dancing. Exactly. You know, you have to go through all this dancing process. I know my partner last year and I got private tutoring because we just couldn't even do the dance. <laughs> so it's a lot harder than it looks. There are a lot of events coming up, though. At 8 p.m., the Creative Dating Cut at the Cutler Majestic. That's always a huge one. Also, 9 a.m. tomorrow, department meetings. And then at 1 p.m., it's the Fitness Center Open House in the Little Building. And 8 p.m., the Library Open House, which is in the Walker Building. So you have to take some time to meet the kids in your dorm, but also take those friends to these events because there is going to be plenty of opportunities in the future to get to know each other. Exactly. All those friends you met last night on your first night at Emerson. It's been uh, interesting to meet all the freshmen coming in and see them coming from all these different backgrounds. Um, Mike had a great report for us. And that yes, was great thanks again, him. Mike, for that. And now we're going to take a look at Lucy Deller on her second day in Boston. Oh my gosh, moving was so great. It went actually relatively fast. And um, first, in the early in the morning, I got my ID and went to the Welcome Center because I wanted to get that out of the way. And then I moved in. I looked at the slides and I weighed my options. I didn't make a list of pros and cons, but I did think about it very intently. And this side just kind of spoke to me. I don't know, it's just, it has a certain aura to it. You know what I'm saying? Unpacking was kind of a challenge because I was like, oh, where does everything go? And I don't know, there were just like so many boxes, but I ended up utilizing my space really well. 
and I brought my computer and I brought my record player with all my records and stuff. I have like my book collection up there and I made special bookends for them out of vinyl so they're like DIY, you know, do it yourself and everything. So I don't know, I, I feel like I kind of been working on this for a while, you know, getting ready for college. People kind of have deemed me the TV person so I, I brought my TV and everything and it's looking good so far. I have a lot of shoes. You know. Everything fits and I have a lot of underbed space because of the bed risers. So that worked out really well. I've actually met a lot of people on my floor. I like being on the star floor because everyone's a freshman and we're actually, there's like a theme, like we're the characters of friends. So I'm like Courtney Cox, I don't know. Um, I'm really proud of my room and it looks pretty good. So I'm looking forward to the future. You know, we can tell Lucy's fitting in Emerson because she's already ready to be followed around by our M. Chan Cruz all week. I know, I mean, like, from the start she got here, her and her parents have been followed around, but it's awesome for us and the new students to kind of see what it's like for a new student and their journey here at Emerson. Exactly, she's got all her stuff moved in. That's the first real issue is where are you going to put what? You can maybe move that <laughs> bed around, maybe move that desk around, but... That's about it. It's LB. You've got to work with what you have. Exactly, exactly. But now we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we get back, Emerson alum Paul Stark will talk to us about his latest show, The Chew. On campus can be overwhelming, especially when it comes to food. Hi, my name's Anthony Monzon, and I have absolutely no idea how to cook a well-balanced meal. If you also struggle with this issue, fear not. Home-cooked meals are served three times a day in the dining hall, located on the second floor of the little building or you could head over to the Max on the second floor of Piro to grab a salad, sushi, or sandwich. So forget about the frying pans and spatulas. Learning to cook can wait, at least until your meal plan runs out. AE Phi is Emerson's only national social sorority, and they're very charitable. Kappa Gamma Chi is for future executives. Like they say, the grass is always greener on the Kappa side. Finally, there's Sigma Pi Theta, they aim to stimulate unity, growth, and awareness amongst the women at Emerson. Paul Stark has produced for popular shows including The Tyra Banks Show and currently The Chew. Paul Stark now joins us via Skype to talk about what it's like to work in the television industry. Paul, thank you so much for joining us. Great to be here, thanks. So you are the producer of numerous award-winning shows. What is the lifestyle like working on such popular daytime programs? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's actually, uh, you know, it seems pretty effortless when you watch it, but a lot goes into it, and there's no real set schedule. Um, it's not like you're in at 9 and out at 5. You're finished when all the work is done. Not for and, the faint uh, of heart. So it can be a little bit unpredictable, but it's also extremely rewarding. And uh, we do get the summers off when we're in reruns. But um, no, it's heck, um, which <laughs> I'm sure is to um, over at school. So I'm curious to know what the environment is like on The Chew, where it's a cooking show compared to the Tire Bank show, where you're having guests coming in. There's a lot more to coordinate. Uh, the difference between the Chu and Tyra, um, the environment at the Chu is very, um, you know, reflective of the house. It's really uh, uh, very laid back and uh, a lot of fun and a lot of, uh, you know, pretty unpredictable. Um, at Tyra, it also personality of the host is is really what drives uh, the show. We had a lot of high profile guests on Tyra. We had uh, President Obama and. Right. Uh, Hillary Clinton, Jack Black, and still Beyonce. And so when guests like that come, um, it can be pretty tense backstage, but um, Tyra makes everyone seem very at ease, and um, it made our jobs a lot easier, too. So we but always hear that it's a long road to the top. So before you were a successful television producer, what types of roles did you have behind the scenes? I started uh, the day after I graduated. Uh, I was uh, I was a PA at CNBC, and I had to do all sorts of, um, you know, let's just call it legwork, but it was, you know, from getting people's dry cleaning to getting them breakfast. But then, you know, the more you do that, and the more you do these things that might seem to be inconsequential, if you do that with a smile on your face, that's really what separates, um, you know, all the other candidates for these very scarce positions. So I did that for a bit, and then I kind of moved up and moved up from, uh, you know, PA to associate producer to producer, and um, 
can now. So do everything uh, happily, no matter what's asked of you. It's, it's really good advice for Emerson students who, you know, we get kind of comfortable in the Vinda Bona studio here. We're not really <laughs> sure what it's like out there in the real world. But were people willing to help you, or did you kind of feel like you had to sort of work yourself um, up? No, actually, my first job, um, one of the people, the first people I met there was a guy named Glenn Meehan, who went to Emerson and started the very first Evie Awards. And he knew that I went to, uh, that I had just graduated from Emerson. And he took me into his office and kind of, um, you know, just really helped acclimate to this new world and kind of laid it out for me. And um, I, I feel like every job I've been at, there's been at least two or three people from Emerson who have been there. So um, we're everywhere. Well, Paul Stark, an excellent Emerson alum. The Evies are still going strong today. He's still going strong <laughs> out there in the real world today. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. The MFA and the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum are extremely popular attractions for art lovers in the Boston area. Harrison Richland took his Boston swag bag down <laughs> to see some art. <laughs> right. Hi, I'm Harrison Richland, and on today's swag bag, our first stop is the New England Aquarium. Just 15 minutes from Emerson's campus, the New England Aquarium holds over 600 types of fish and sea creatures. Unfortunately, tickets aren't free, but there are student discounts as well as college nights. And if that still doesn't float your boat, you can just stand around the seal tank and watch for 30 minutes. That's always free. And so are dreams. The aquarium also has an IMAX theater that shows marine documentaries about sharks, penguins, and other sea life. Both the New England Aquarium and the Simons IMAX Theater offer discounted prices with a valid college ID. They still aren't free, but it's cheaper than if you were just the average Joe. This scalding hot bench along the Boston waterfront is a favorite spot of mine. There are restaurants, shops, and all sorts of tours, from whale watches to nautical adventures. It's perfect for anyone. But if you really don't enjoy just sitting around, you can check out Faneuil Hall with me, because it's our next stop. Faneuil Hall was built in 1740 as a gift from local merchant Peter Faneuil to the city of Boston. It's about a 15 minute walk from Boylston. Be careful, the streets haven't been recobbled since its founding, and to call these stones even would be a call of Boston winter mild. Today Faneuil Hall is home to shops, restaurants, and street performers. But if you don't want to spend any money, it's a great place to just soak in the atmosphere. That's it for today's swag bag. I'm Harrison Richland reminding you that a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. But two in the bush is worth a heavy stocking fine. Back to you guys in the studio. There's nothing quite worse than coming home late only to find that you forgot to take your key or worse, your ID. <laughs> so true, Anthony. Maggie Morlaff is here to show us all the tricks of taking care of your keys and student ID. Maggie, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so the most important thing that you guys need at all times are both your keys and your ID. So. Um, there are many ways that you can keep that on your person. And we have some I, cool little purses here. Yeah, Would you call them purses yeah, or wallets? Yeah, sure, little accessories. <laughs> yeah. I personally like to keep it in this little tiny wallet, which has this um, nice plastic uh, pocket, so you can easily see uh, the picture there. Right. And, uh, you know, you can hand this to the desk assistant to tap you in. Um, but, yeah, IDs are super important. You need to have them because they can get you not only into your residence hall and all the different buildings on campus, but um, your EC Cash and your board box are also on here, and uh, EC Cash right. can get you plenty of different things. Um, we have a nice list for you. <laughs> but um, I, I like the combo with the keys and the ID because once you get you. off campus, mm -hmm. there's no RA. Even if you lost your keys, very you'd handy just be done. to have You're both done. of them in exactly. the same place. Exactly. Yeah, I like to have it all together. So you got your keys here too. Um, you know, and you can find these little wallets. I have a Vera Bradley one. You can get cool. one at a Vera Bradley store or any other cute little stores in the area. But um, you can also have it on a lanyard. And I know that all new students get a lanyard when you get here to mm -hmm. school, but uh, you know sometimes you lose it or being the Emersonian that we <laughs> all are. Exactly, we like to be unique. So exactly. <laughs> um, you can find a cool sports one. Bruins. Yeah, that would be for me right here. Of Thank course, you, Maggie. Definitely. I appreciate this for that small population at Emerson. That. You know. Oh yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so there are a bunch of different kinds you can get. Um, but something like this will come out to be maybe like $11 or something okay. like that. So a nice, cheap, and easy fix to that is making one yourself. 
So that's what we're going to do right, right now. <laughs> and the way we're going to do it is just with some ribbon and these little lanyard attachments that I got at Michael's. Okay. I always go to the Michael's at Porter Square. Nice, easy tea ride. You can pick up basically any craft supplies you need. <laughs> so, Logan, I'm going to ask you to just take this ribbon. Okay, great. Thank Logan you. It's purple. And we have some <laughs> puffy paint here. It's a nice fabric. Do my own little design. Sure, yeah. Like <laughs> my example here, I wrote hashtag EC2017, right. hashtag so Emerson. You know, you can I like that one. get yeah. crazy yeah, with it. You can put whatever you want on there. <laughs> yeah, 2017 definitely. 2017 makes me feel old. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but for Anthony, we know, you know, you're a sports guy. There you got we go. some baseball there we ribbon. Go. So I'm going to ask you to just cut this okay. to as long as you think you need. Let's see. Say, that, that should be all right, right? All there. right. And then what you're going to do is just take the lanyard attachment, loop this through. So I'm glad you're doing that for me because Miss Romans would tell you I failed arts and crafts in kindergarten. Uh, so. Well, you have a lot of schooling since then, so I'm gonna let you take <laughs> this one away. This. Okay. And if you use our hot glue gun there and glue the ends together. Okay. So Maggie, what happens if students lose their ID or keys? Yeah, it happens, unfortunately it does. But um, if you lose your keys, you can just talk to your RA. Don't be afraid to talk to your RA, they will let you into your room and um, you know when you get locked out unfortunately the first time I mean it is just a warning but then after that you do have to start paying a fine um, and then if you lose your ID you can go to the Emerson College Police Department they can get you a temporary ID and then after that you might need to get a new ID but um also there are more fines with that so just be careful well, thank you so much Maggie thank this you so much really yeah. big help. Anthony, I'm literally freaking out right now. And it can't be because you lost your keys. It's got to be because <laughs> we have a celebrity guest coming up next. We will have a real Emerson RA. Hi, my name's Anthony Monzon, and I now only have five board bucks left because all I do is buy breakfast sandwiches before a class at MCAF. Quick meals are also available at Paramount Cafe. You can also head to the LB and buy snacks in the C store until 2 a.m. Offers at different locations may vary. Board bucks may dwindle very quickly. Satisfaction is not guaranteed to all customers. Phi Alpha Ta is all business, suit and tie, all day, every day. SAE is one of Emerson's only national social fraternities, lots of fun, even more brotherly bonds. Alpha Pi Theta is all about traditions. They're all cool, all the time. As a fonds. Zeta Phi Eta is a co-ed fraternity, so ladies are welcome too. They're about business, friendship, and equality. to watch over their residents. We have one of those RAs, Jacob Wallet, here to talk about what it takes to be a good RA. Jacob, thanks for so much for coming on the show. Well, thanks for having me, more importantly, I think. Of course. So what originally interested you about being an RA? Um, well, growing up, I've kind of always been the type of person that I always liked to, to help people, kind of uh, be able to guide people in the right direction. I uh, always liked being in a leadership role, not because I have the power or anything <laughs> like that, but more just... Uh, uh, just because I like uh, being able to to know that I've been able to, as I said, you know, guide people in the right direction, make them happy, put a smile on their face, act as you know someone that uh, you know uh, someone that someone can come to. Well, so. there's a lot of leaders at Emerson, a lot of kids that might be interested in being RAs. It's a Absolutely. very competitive process. I've seen some of my friends go through it. What traits do you think stand out? As to make a good RA? Well, there's not, I guess, for me personally, I don't believe there's one really certain trait that stands out. Uh, there's a lot, there's a wide range of uh, c uh, characters, I guess you could say, when it comes to RAs, is, uh, you know, the ones that uh, love being, meeting people, being loud, you know, uh, <laughs> dancing around, kind of like what Emerson is pretty much all about. But then you have some of the more quiet RAs, uh, so it's kind of a whole range of them, and it, it just serves as someone how if you might have a, more of a shy student that may not be uh, as comfortable talking with someone who is as, um, I guess, boisterous or anything like that. You do right. have like more, it was someone that's more calm and cool, collected, which is, none of those are really any bad things at all. Um, so it's just more so someone who can serve as an advocate, uh, serve as a resource and, you know, someone that, you know, a resident can trust. Mm -hmm. So for those who become RAs, what is the training process like? Oh, it's, it's rigorous. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're here basically before anybody else. Uh, we got here August 11th. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, was, I was still at the beach. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I wish I could have been too, but we get here August 11th. Training starts on August 12th. Uh, then it's two weeks, pretty much day after day. You know, up at eight in the morning or even earlier than that, starting at 9 a.m. And uh, it just it ranges from everything uh, 
know, one thing Emerson's stepping up is uh, talking more about prevention. Obviously, it's not a problem, but more prevention on sexual assault. So learning okay. how to deal with such serious issues such as that, or maybe even as something as little as oh, a resident locked their, you know, locked themselves out of their room. Uh, so it's a whole, you know, variety of things like that. So say you do discover something in a room that shouldn't be there. I know you guys don't enjoy coming in, <laughs> but what's the process for that, and um, what are the different punishments that a student um, could face? Well, as, as an RA is our job. If we see something that isn't allowed, such as alcohol or drugs or anything like that, uh, our job is mainly just to kind of document what the what the scene is. Uh, you know, talking, basically going through the process and just letting know that uh, they are in violation of policy, taking down ID numbers. It's not an enjoyable place to you know spot to be in. Um, but you know that's the process. After we're done documenting it, right. uh, it, it moves up the chain. So pretty much after the situation is over with, it's out of our hands. So we don't really get to make the call on what happens. But it, it's our job to document what is uh, what well, is the being. Thank you so much, Jay. Absolutely, for coming in thank and you. To us. It's really a lot of great information. There are two great things about the MCAF on campus. It's wicked convenient between class and of course Esperanza. Jamie Sanders has more on this great Emerson hotspot. MCAF, a posh bistro located in the middle of all the action. It's Emerson Cafe, but we call it MCAF because contractions are short and exciting. MCAF, more like MCAF. Mm Let's go check it out. Here at MCAF, they have muffins, paninis, killer clam chowder, and if you ask really nicely, you still have to pay because it's a working establishment and they would not give handouts. This fine establishment is known far and wide for its superior cleanliness. If you find a hair in your food, it's probably your own. And for you fresh-faced freshmen, have no fear, for they accept both board box and EC cash if you need to take a break from the dining hall. If you were here last year, you know that the dining services took a drastic change for the better. Now you can enjoy such delicacies as Pete's coffee. Tastes peaty. Now remember, children, stay posh, stay in school, and come to MCAF for the Pete's coffee, if nothing else. That looks like a sign of approval. And I suppose that with that, we must head off into the wild blue yonder after finishing our magical sandwich. And until next time, I'm going to set you what I'm cooking up in the kitchen. Back to me, me. Jamie is now in studio with us to teach us the masterful art of creating <laughs> the breakfast sandwich. Jamie, thank you for being here. My pleasure. Are you guys married to your breakfast? Oh, totally. Yeah, I mean, it's an unhealthy <laughs> relationship. It's, you know, so short, but I mean, that marriage is beautiful, and I think that every college <laughs> student really understands that having a good, solid breakfast is an important part to start every day. Exactly. So um, I'm actually bringing you here today um, a nice, basic bacon and egg and cheese breakfast oh, sandwich, which, yeah, that's Sounds bacon and scrumptious. cheese. Sounds <laughs> Yes. So um, as you can see, we have our cheese, our bacon, and we have egg beaters here right now, which, um, it's kind of easier to store than normal poor eggs. Poor man's eggs. Exactly. Poor man's eggs. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, this, this had like 20 eggs in it apparently, or 20 right. eggs oh, worth wow. in it. So, good deal. Um, yeah, so it's pretty good. And this is microwave safe bacon, which, of course, if it's safe for the microwave, it's safe for the door. The door rooms. <laughs> yeah. So, hope, or hopefully, I mean, you know, I, I'm a dangerous man. I live dangerously. <laughs> but so, what we do is we're going to magically put, I'm putting this in to. Okay. A mug, so which after then we would worked the microwave magic. Is that microwave <laughs> magic happens? In this case, we don't have a microwave, so it's the power of imagination. It changes Voila. the color of the mug, and <laughs> ta-da! Perfect mold for It's the beautiful. Egg. I, That's I love great. it. And um, so then, once we have that, we're gonna put it on a plate with um. We now I have choices um, which is either English muffins or any, bagels. Any yeah, which, which any, any sort of bread you on. want is solid. Right. Ta-da. There we go. <laughs> which I just kind of put out the, um, the basic ingredients. Also, what we have here is after a short drop in the microwave, and of course, follow the box. That's basically <laughs> all I can say here is follow what it says on the box. Let's do the smell test. Yes. <laughs> now, for that people who are vegetarians, just leave out the bacon, basically? Exactly. Just egg exactly. and cheese. I mean, egg and cheese on its own is delicious and a tasty combination, and it'll keep you going. And then finally, ultimately, what you're going to end up with should hopefully look something, I mean, well, if you're inspired <laughs> by me at all, hopefully it looks something like this. Ooh, there Ta it is. Voila. <laughs> and I actually made you two some of your own versions. I know that um, you, my darling, uh, do not eat eggs. Oh, you're too so, sweet. 
<laughs> you got your own. So here we are. So and there's a lot together. of different things you could do if you, if you don't actually eat the eggs. Yes. Looks great. And of course you can put sauces on it or okay. any other sort of thing. Did you add anything to the eggs too? Um, I actually I like to put pepper on it, which is nice. Okay, cool. Um, because pepper is, of course, a nice seasoning for right. any sort of it's dish. Easy, something exactly. you have in the dorm too. Yes, it is. I mean, also um, hot sauce. I mean, that's just a personal preference. I put hot sauce on just really? about everything. Hot sauce. I mean, Ooh. not cake, but I mean, cake <laughs> is good on its own. I put that stuff on everything. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, also I also enjoy. Um, if you um, use toast, for example, like, like if you have, I mean, okay. we don't have toasters, but um, I did used, um, because we can't have toasters in the dorm, I used a pan, um, which you just put butter okay. on the pan. Especially and if then, you're in Colonial, Yeah, right? like that's, that's how I toasted this. You can actually yeah, see Yeah, they have great kitchens in Colonial, here, so. This, um, well, actually, it's stuck on now because it's melted. But um, you can see it's got, it looks toasted. It looks like it came out of a toaster, which is good because toast is right. delicious. So, I don't, yeah. so how long do you think it takes to put this whole thing together? Ultimately, as long as you have the right ingredients, I think that it could take you between five and ten minutes. Fantastic. Well, well, Jamie, thank you so much for helping us make these Absolutely. Sandwiches. Thanks, Jamie. That's all the time we have for today's episode of Fast Forward Rewind. Don't forget to put down that sandwich and pick up your smartphone because we will be answering your Twitter questions sent to underscore FFRW underscore on Friday's show. Have a great night.